Hi everyone, I'm Steve, here again with Brian Sanchez. Brian, thanks for being here. Glad to be here, as always, Steve. All right, so if you guys are old like us, and you want to stay fit and know what you should do in the gym, like and subscribe uh, to this channel. And uh, we're going to talk about something that you, there is a lot of opinions on. Deadlifts. You're a power lifter. I know what you're going to say. But I, I get a lot of comments on the channel. Oh, don't do that. That's dangerous. That's, that's way too dangerous for a, an older person to do. Even a younger person. Don't. Why do that? Why risk it? Well, if you're 65 years old, and I, I don't train people anymore. It's probably a good thing. But, um, yeah, I can see that 70-year-old walking out. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have them do deadlifts. You know, and now, it may be modified. It may be a very short range of motion. I might not even be using any weight. But you're going to do deadlifts. And if there's one exercise, if you could only do one exercise, for me, that's the one I'm going to pick. That's the one exercise. Now, it's not ideal, of course, if you're going to do um, only one exercise. But I want to hear the comments, too, because I know a lot of you are thinking, you know, I did this to my back. I heard this person did this, and then blah, 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 and this happened. Uh, so I want to hear opinions about all, all of you out there listening, what do you think about deadlifts? And we'll talk about two different styles too, conventional and sumo deadlifts. But what do you say about deadlifts, Brian? I love deadlifts for this guy. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do in the world. But let's be realistic. Can you get hurt doing a deadlift? Uh-huh. Yes, you can. Is it dangerous for you? If you have poor technique and you are lifting above your ability and your means, um, I, I would call it ego lifting. Yeah, there's some things that can go on. And when I'm talking about <coughs> proper deadlifting, proper techniques, if you're jerking on the bar, if you're overlifting, if you're always trying to max out in the lift and you are not keeping these bars, and I'm talking traditional straight bar deadlifting, tight to your body where the center of mass is, you can definitely put yourself into a bad situation. But to suggest that a deadlift is a, a, an exercise that is not safe, mm -mm, I think that's absolutely false. The reason I say that is because when people get hurt doing that, I would like to see you know more information to why they got hurt. Because I would venture to say that there was a technique issue that it might be an overlifting issue, people lifting with their ego and beyond their means. I deadlift every single week. I have clients that deadlift. Not all my clients deadlift in the, in the traditional fashion, but we do all kinds of different variations. I want you to think about this. Now, if you don't have medical restrictions and you just didn't have your lower back um, taken care of, if you will, like surgically repaired, you have to look at the musculature for in your lower back, in your buttocks, in your glutes, in your hamstrings, the upper hamstring. The deadlift works so many important muscles between our knees and our chest that are important for the stabilization and health of our body, the pelvic region, okay, the lower back, the, the upper buttocks, the hamstrings. It works so many quality um, posterior chain, if you will, muscles. It's an absolutely good exercise to use. Now, with that said, if you've never deadlifted, grab a coach. Seriously, grab a coach. Because what happens is a lot of people when they're deadlifting, they want to go in and they want to put in all this weight. Their, their bar will get past their toes and it's hanging. Well, we all know that if you go out and move a table and you get the weight away from your body and you turn or twist the wrong way, you're going to throw your back out. Yeah, that's possible. I think the same thing could be applied to the deadlifting. So how do you do this safely? 
technique and use differing systems. If you're not coming in here to Olympic deadlift, then you don't have to use a traditional deadlift. You can use something like a very safe way to do it is a suitcase hold. What that means is you're taking dumbbells and you're holding on to them outside of your legs and you keep them on the exterior of the leg and you hold them on it. You can do things like hang deadlifts, modifications to them, where you're not going into the same depth, but you're still look, working that hip hinge movement within the pelvic region that is absolutely necessary for all of us to have strong if we want to maintain a solid walking ability as we age. You can do stuff with the trap bar is one of my favorite ones when, uh, when we're working with it. Now, the trap bar obviously by name isn't necessarily the first thing people think of when deadlift, but the trap bar, for those of you that don't know, is the bar that has six sides to it and it comes around and it has two extensions on the outside. The handles for the trap bar are to the side, so they're not in front of you. So when you use that device in a deadlift, you're in a suitcase hold is the way I describe it with the, with the hands to the outside the weight's not going to get in front of you and not pull you to your toes. So it's very safe. But then again, lift within your means. What I know about deadlifting uh, from a lifetime of doing it is, yeah, it can injure you if you're over lifting. If you're jerking and pulling, you've got all these nerves through the upper body area in through the clavicle zone that, that can create problems for you. If you start jerking on the bar, you know, you could develop carpal tunnel if you're doing things wrong with it and you're overexerting all the time. It, it's probably one of the bigger reasons why I've backed off on how much I lift. So I know that over time, yes, that can, that can hurt you. Could you develop issues when it comes to compression of the back? Well, if you're putting too much weight on that bar and you're holding on to it and you're standing up and it's compressing your body and you're 140 pounds and you got 500 pounds on that bar, yeah, it's possible it can compress you a little bit. You got to think about that. If you are not a trained power lifter and in competition, then come talk to us and we'll show you all kinds of ways to safety deadlift with bars, barbells, no weight, as Steve and I had talked in the past, with lightweight with other devices, kettlebells are perfect for deadlifting techniques as long as you drop the weight in a certain position between your feet. So, no, Steve, I am one of those people that absolutely believes deadlift is an excellent way to exercise. Yeah, and you, you, you mentioned the hex bar. That's kind of, it's a little more similar to a squat where you're holding the the handles down like a deadlift, but it's the movement and your body's moving a little more like a squat. And, you know, we talk about injury and you said you can injure yourself doing deadlifts, but look, look at the ways people injure themselves. They injure themselves getting out of bed. They injure themselves getting out of their recliner. They injure themselves getting up off the ground all these ways, getting up out of a chair, they injure themselves. So if you don't want to injure yourself, do deadlifts, right? Strengthen that lower back. Strengthen your buttocks. Strengthen your hamstrings. That's the stuff that's going to help you to stay away from hurting yourself. When, and I always kid around, you know you're getting old when you hurt yourself sleeping. Well, if your back is in pain because you went to bed and slept for eight hours, you might want to ask why. And if your back is, is um, undertrained, if you will, or if you have tilts and, and you're holding your body wrong, we might have to strengthen that lower back. One of the best ways to do it is deadlifting. But we can do it in so many safe ways. Yeah, and don't just... <clears throat> beginners, intermediate lifters who've never done deadlifts, don't just walk into the gym and say, I'm going to do deadlifts today. No, don't do it that way. You need some training. Get trained. Get someone to show you, a qualified person who knows what they're doing and why they're doing it. Uh, maybe a, a coach or a personal trainer. But don't just walk into the gym and put a bunch of weight on the bar and do deadlifts because um, I might not work out for you too well. It, it, exactly. And one of the things I want you to look at, these guys that are very good at deadlifting, look at their shins. You will see their technique is so tied in 
that they've probably scarred themselves a little bit because they keep that weight so close to the center of mass of their body, which is an extremely important part. They're dragging that bar up and down because they're so technically efficient in that lift. And, and those are good signs of somebody that kind of in my eyes, and I'm not saying just because you drag a bar up and down your body means that, you know, that you're good. They could have all kinds of bad things going on, but it's important to keep tight in your deadlift in the sense of your technique, period. You just got to go for it. Find somebody who is trained. Yeah. Technique is critical. You have to have the proper technique and you need to learn the technique before you really start using any weights. Let's talk a little bit about sumo deadlifts and conventional style deadlifts. You know, you mentioned um, kettlebells. I love kettlebells for sumo deadlifts. You have that uh, kettlebell right in between your legs and you're doing the deadlift movement. You get great range of motion and I'll even take a couple of steps and so I can get even deeper and do that. That feels good. It's a fantastic way. And, and when you're using a, a sumo style deadlift, you're going to find that the musculature in your legs is going to work a little bit differently. And if you work yourself to exhaustion, you might feel a little more conditioning on the interior portion of your legs yep. than you would with a traditional deadlift, which is going to hang more to the posterior side of your, of your body. Those are those little interesting things when you're trying to develop yourself that you need to know. And I encourage those that love deadlifting to do them both ways. Wide bases are nice. You're going to see people that have uh, real uh, um, um, small bases when they're lifting. But when you get to those wide bases, you'll be surprised at the stability your body has. And so sumo is a great way to work out. And what we mean by sumo is your feet are going to be wide. Generally, you're, you're going to have an angle to your foot. And your hands are going to be in front of your body, hanging straight down, basically toward the middle of your body. And you're pulling the weight from within your, your leg base as opposed to outside of it. Right. And the conventional style is your hands are going to be outside of your knees. Um, and I would probably say most people use the conventional style. Um, but you're right. You're going to get... Uh, a little more out of your legs, especially those inner thighs. And that can build some width. If you're trying to build some width, you want your legs to look wider or broader. Throw uh, sumo deadlifts into your routine. Yeah. It, it, if you're in the Carson area, come in and stop down. We got a kid down here, Brandon, who I believe is an expert in deadlifting and he's a, a competitive power lifter. These guys can show you so much safely. And, and you'll never, you'll never be upset with it. So I caution, you know, to those of you who think you're the experts, yes, we understand you've dealt with people who've been hurt deadlifting, but don't paint the broad brush that it is a bad exercise. I can hurt myself by opening the door if it hits me in the head. It doesn't mean we can't use doors. Right. You, you really got to think about what you're telling people. Don't disgrace people from doing excellent techniques. If you're looking at it from the view of, of harm, they just have to be taught to do it right. And if you're out there deadlifting without experience and you um, don't seek out technique training, you really got to think twice because you can hurt yourself. Absolutely. Well, it's something, in my opinion, I think it's a great exercise. And uh, we do have, you know, at the Carson Club, Brandon's there. I think he's a state, some type of a state champion power lifter. So he's getting, he's getting ready for another competition. It is impressive for all you power lifters. So he, uh, he knows how to do deadlifts. <laughs> His technique is flawless. Yeah. And that's the key. You, you got to get your technique right. And you start chasing weight a little bit on a deadlift and now your back's curved and you're losing your technique. That's first thing to go when, you know, you're, you're trying to do too much weight. Well, and I think that's part of the danger when people are trying to ego lift and they get into that deadlift, they won't let go of the bar and their, their technique does go out the window. The weight gets away from their body, past their toes, if you will, away from their body and their back arches, then they're in danger. 
And that happens a lot of the times when you're over lifting, you're, you're well beyond your ability. All right. Well, Brian, we're both uh, big advocates and supporters of the deadlift both ways. Uh, thanks for being with us, Brian. We'll talk to you next time. Great to be here. Take care, everybody. Deadlift.